Well, is it, oh, hang on, I want it this way up, don't I? It doesn't matter too much, but um, whichever way, yeah, that'll be good. Uh, two, two things that are massively different. One, buildings. Two, uh, the digital world. So buildings, so when I arrived in 93, maths were in port cabins, English were in port cabins, geography was in port cabins, biology was in port cabins. Which when you think of how good a school this is, it's pretty extraordinary. So everyone was in temporary accommodation. So we've moved into these amazing classrooms. Uh, with, with the probably a single exception of classics, who presumably feel they're, they're next on the list for a new building. But the, the buildings were just nothing like as good as they are now. And the socials were much, much tattier. Boys were in much smaller rooms and much less. And that's partially because they were packed in, because the socials had 82, 83 boys in each at the time, before we built J and K and then eventually built L Social. So bu buildings is the thing that's really obvious. The new Astro, the Astro was a was an old cinder track. The cinder track, all the cinder came from Didcot Power Station. So Didcot Power Station, which is obviously just down the road, was a coal-fired power station. And there were 17 trains a day coming through Radley Station of coal from up in the Yorkshire, the Yorkshire mines. And so, and all the cinder that came out of that was going onto our athletics track on, and onto the Astro. The Astro in the middle of the athletics track was a cinder Astro. So yeah, the building's just amazing. When I arrived, um, Max Horsey was teaching electronics and doing a little bit of the beginning of the video unit and producing videotapes. And we had BBC micros with screens. We had screens up in dining hall which kind of did the today board for you. So you, as you stood in the queue for lunch you could discover that there was a band practice at 2.30 or something. Um, and we had a few Macintoshes, the, uh, the very original Macintosh with System 7 black and white screens and stuff. Uh, but then people like Jeff Glowen came along, um, following on from Jolly and Booth, and did amazing, amazing things with digital, and Max's empire just got bigger and bigger. And uh, we started running out networks everywhere, and we connected, in 94, I think, we connected one computer to the internet. Uh, and then we put a few more computers onto the internet. And of course, thereafter, we built amazing databases, and we, John Harris, who was head of geography, he and I built the first website for the school, um, which we sort of hand-coded um, over a couple of weekends. It, it would have looked terrible by today's standards, but it looked all right at the time. And then my, I remember rolling out email to my lower sixth set. So my lower sixth physics set, we gave, uh, I think there was eight of them, and we gave them email accounts to see what boys would do if you gave them an email account, whether it would be dangerous. And then we built the whole school database. So we built this massive database with photographs of every boy and started doing electronic reports. My wife will tell you that we, we launched the first lot of electronic reports in, uh, on May the, May the 8th of 1998. Um, I know that because that's my daughter's birthday because I left the John Radcliffe to come back here and brief common room that we were launching the school database. My wife's never quite forgiven me for this. Uh, that tells you how, how dedicated Radley Dons are really, they're prepared to leave their wife's bedside to, to launch a new database. And, and obviously from then on we went to, you know, the Firefly and um, learning management systems and uh, getting boys to write their own reports and then Covid and cameras and Teams and Zoom and everything. So the, yeah, the two huge changes have been the physical infrastructure of the place and the, and the digital infrastructure. Uh, old Radleyans watching this would be delighted to know that John Buzzard still runs absolutely everything and, and is a, a legend and who no one ever sees. They just get messages from him telling them that they've done something terribly wrong. I suspect the place should stay single sex. Uh, I think there'll be huge pressure to go co-ed. Winchester have just gone co-ed. More and more schools are, are being pressurised into going Co-ed, but I think it should probably stay all boys. I think that's part of its um, the DNA of the place. Oh, and gowns. I think it'd be terrible if we got rid of gowns. 
I mean, the, you know, the one thing that makes this place completely marvellous. Oh, I mean, all the visitors who come, you walk into dining hall and you're all these boys in gowns and they just, everyone just kind of goes, yeah, it's just like Harry Potter, isn't it? Which it kind of is, apart from the fact that boys don't have wands. I suspect if they did have wands, they'd all leave them back in social anyway and you'd have to send them back between lessons to go and get their wand because they always forget their calculators and their formula sheets, so why the hell would they bring their wand? I don't think I'd change very much. A boy, a boy said to me the other day, a boy had been in the school for three years and I'd been here for 30 years, so he's been here for three. And he, he announced very firmly, talking to me in the lunch queue, that he, he didn't think anything should change at Radley, he thought it was just brilliant. You know, this is ultimately the world's best boys' school and it's, and it's fantastic for that. Well, I, did, I, did, uh, I was doing dining hall one evening in June and, you know, boys will remember, you know, the wonders of Dining Hall. And uh, there's usually a don there just to make sure they don't riot or something. And it was, the, it was the middle of June. It was a glorious summer's day. And I was supposed to be on duty at 5.30. And uh, all boys who've ever been taught by me will know that I'm late for everything. So I turned up late for Dining Hall, thinking that all would be well in the world. Half the school had gone by then because of fifth form exams and A-level exams and stuff. Half the school's playing tennis. So, you know, there's only about 25 boys in dining room and I figured that, you know, they, they'd look after themselves and that really wouldn't be a problem. So I wander into dining hall to be met by one of the catering staff who said, there's been a food fight. My career flashed before my eyes. Oh my God, I'm gonna to have to explain this to the sub warden. I walk in and they, there'd been chocolate muffins for supper and these chocolate muffins had been thrown absolutely everywhere. The floor is a mass of chocolate muffins. And as I walk in, there's, there's literally about 50 boys in the room, tops, and the table immediately next to me as I walk into dining hall, it's full of six twos. Well, most of the six twos have left, so it's, it's about half a dozen six twos, including the senior prefect, the second prefect, and four pups. So I'm slightly surprised to discover there's been a food fight, bearing in mind we've got the senior prefect, the second prefect, and four pups in the room. So I, I said to the senior prefect, I said, sorry, can you just explain what the hell happened? You know? All these prefects look down at the table, trying to sort of <coughs> cover their tracks. Before the senior prefect finally says, well, sir, it's, it's, uh, it's my last exam tomorrow morning, and it's Charlie's last exam tomorrow morning, and, and uh, James's last exam is tomorrow afternoon. And so we suddenly realised that this is, this is our last ever supper. And so we were just talking about the fact it's our last ever time in dining room, and it's our last ever supper. And we're going, God, you know, five years at Radley. And he said, at this point, we remembered the amazing food fights that we used to have when we were in the fifth form. He said, they don't happen so often now, sir, but we were just thinking, God, those huge food fights. And then we thought, well, why not have one last food fight? So I'm now looking at the senior prefect going, I'm so sorry, you're telling me you started the food fight as the senior prefect? He goes, yes, sir. What, and who did you have the food fight with? Well, all the other pups, sir. <laughs> right, says I. The senior prefect is, of course, the nicest bloke in the school, obviously, or he wouldn't be the senior prefect. So I'm going, right, I'm slightly amazed, but you, you better clear it up then. To which, of course, he goes, no problem, sir. Stands up, disappears off in the kitchen, gets a dustpan and brush and a broom, starts cleaning up while all the other pups watch him uh, in huge amusement. And a few shells and a few removes watched him in absolute astonishment because now they've got the senior prefect apparently clearing dining room. Eventually the second prefect broke and went and got a broom and a dustpan and then four other pups and I had these six pups. I don't think the, the sub warden ever did discover there'd been a food fight on my watch for my failure to turn up. People, place, purpose and partnership. Um, I still haven't figured out what the purpose is. Uh, I suspect it's just to provide a fabulous education for boys, which is probably what it does. Um, but clearly, you, you know, the people and the, and the place is what you'll miss the most. I mean, the place is fabulous. I mean, just living here for 30 years is just a huge privilege. Uh, and, and the grounds are wonderful. And the, the job that Adam King and his team does is amazing. And you, you know, you go out into those pitches in the summer, well, any time of the year, really, but the summer with the, with the 11 out on big side, and it's, it's an amazing place to be. Um, and to bring up a family and to have both my children go through the school and, but ultimately, the, the place is made by the people. And so I guess the, the, the people will miss fabulously. Um, both the adults and the, 
and the teenagers. I mean, the thing is, the, 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 the colleagues that we've got here are amazing. I mean, just the amazingly interested, interesting people who know their subject absolutely back. Because you can go up to the common room and grab a coffee and, and talk happily about, you know, the Middle Ages or about Roman emperors or about philosophy or about... Uh, the, I mean, the, the quality of the music here that's been done over the years by the various heads of music and all the musicians. It's a, it's a staggering place to be, surrounded by amazing colleagues. And, and uh, you know, one hopes that we'll keep in touch with, with loads of those colleagues, and, and I'm sure that will be a privilege to come over the years. The teenagers, you know, the boys, the boys are obviously what this place is all about, and they are... Teaching teenagers at a school like this is just a huge privilege because they are so entertaining. I mean, they are both brilliant and staggeringly stupid at the same time. And they do amazingly daft things and then impress you with something completely extraordinary. Uh, and, you know, walking into, dragging in 20 shell boys on a summer's day or, or taking a 6-2 six, six set for physics is just a huge laugh. Just a thank you, just a thank you to, to Radley for everything, for the, for the privilege of being here, to, to the people who were stupid enough to appoint me, Charlie Milward, who was the head of physics who appointed me, and Richard Morgan, who took a, took, took a punt on a random Air Force officer who had never taught physics, had never taught in his life, didn't even have a physics degree. I had an economics degree from Oxford, for heaven's sake. Um, and, and then all the people who've supported me over the years and all the boys have entertained me and the governing body have done all the amazing things for the buildings and the IT team and the technicians and yeah, just everybody. It's just, just to spend 30 years in a place where you can walk up the drive with a smile on your face every day and really look forward to going to work. They say if you can find a job you love, you need never work again. And it's kind of been true for me, I think, that it hasn't really been work for the last 30 years.